Thanks for joining me for Classical Art Tips. Today we're going to look at the seven step painting method. And I offer private lessons and consultations through my website, oceanviewarts.com. So here we go. Classical seven step painting method. So this is an overview of the seven step painting method. The first step is to render a charcoal drawing with good composition and full tonal values. The next step will be trace the drawing. The next step is to transfer the tracing to the canvas. Then you seal the drawing to the canvas and you stain the canvas and then paint a value painting. And then on top of that, the color painting. And this is how the great masters and academicians learn. This is the method that was taught in the Stevenson Studio, Studio and Gallery and the New Renaissance Atelier where I went to school by Harold Stevenson and his wife Alma Galanos. It was also taught at the Art Students League where he studied with Frank Riley and other teachers. Harold Stevenson said every step is a link in a chain. To have a strong chain, each link must be created with care. So this is basically a very step-by-step, -step, but essentially foolproof process. So we'll look at step one, which is carefully rendered the charcoal drawing. And the first part of step one is to do the line drawing. So that's, we're gonna look at that first. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna look at some classically trained artists. Uh, they all learn these realistic academic techniques, and that includes the Impressionists. So these are three very classical looking paintings done by people you might know, Cla Claude Monet, Edgar Degas, and Georgia O'Keeffe. And you might want to guess who did what. <laughs> so we'll take a look at their work just to refresh. These are Degas, so a pastel on the left and a ballet painting on the right, which he was well known for. And Monet's water lilies on the left and haystacks on the right. And Georgia O'Keeffe, who is known for very large uh, flower paintings and tended to be towards the abstract. So, now you want to see if you can guess who did what? It might be a little hard to guess. So if you want to take some time to think about it, you can stop the uh, recording here. I'm going to go ahead and give you the answers. So this one is by Degas. This is some kind of vessel, like a pitcher that is in the shape of a man's head. So that's why it looks a little funny at the top. That's actually a spout. And he did that when he was a young art student. Monet did this uncharacteristic looking still life when he was young art student or sh shortly after when he was a young artist. And George O'Keefe did the dead rabbit. You can see here she was experimenting a little bit with unusual composition, uh, but basically it's a very classical painting. So this is one of my paintings that I did when I was studying at the New Renaissance Atelier with Harold Stevenson. This is uh, my fourth painting, oil painting. I was probably about 19 or 20 when I did this, and you can see it's very realistic. That was my training at the beginning with very realistic paintings. And this is some of my current work, which is much more visionary. However, there is, in my understanding, no way to do visionary artwork like this unless you really understand the basics of academic drawing and painting. This is another piece of my artwork. This is, uh, of course, a portrait of the Dalai Lama. It's almost five feet tall from the ed end of the tassel to the very top, maybe four and a half. 
and there's no paint on here anywhere this is entirely done with little tiny pieces of fabric and thread and the thread was used to kind of blend the colors so it doesn't really matter what your medium is my the previous two paintings that i showed of my i mean page of mine were one was a, the big one was acrylic and the other two were colored pencil this is fabric and thread it's really all about the values and the understanding of form it's not about what your medium is so my cl uh, classes in uh, learning figure painting and portrait is what contributed to me doing this in fabric and i can tell you if you can't do this in a drawing or oil painting you can't do it in fabric fabric is much harder but it was fun i enjoyed it and i did it during a period of time when i was allergic to oil paint so i was looking for other ways to create artwork so let's look at step one part one the line drawing so the first thing you're going to do is know what size you're going to do your painting because this drawing is going to be done the same size i'm doing small ones this is just eight by ten because most of mine are demos but whatever size canvas you're going to use you will trace that onto your ch charcoal paper uh newsprint paper you don't need to use charcoal paper. Newsprint paper is fine for this. You do want a rough finished newsprint paper. Smooth doesn't work. So it, rather than measuring with a ruler, I just took the canvas panel and drew around it. And here's my outline for the outside size of the drawing. Then you want to draw the shape of the objects. Now at the upper right, you see what the still life looked like in front of me that's actually the finished charcoal drawing but i did have a still life set up in front of me with the three pieces of fruit and the picture and what you want to do is visualize however many objects are in your um, picture which in this case is four objects so three pieces of fruit and the picture and visualize them as one unit and you want to draw the outline shape of that one unit first and place it in your rectangle or your square whatever size you're painting and we look how you would do this is this shows you the shape around these objects you want to kind of think if these objects could be shrink wrapped and that's that uh, stuff that like clear cellophane stuff that they use on easter baskets and it would stretch itself between the widest points so that's how you visualize the shape of the objects that you want to place on your paper so here we have that shape again and on the upper left one uh, it's too small i've drawn it a little too small too much space around it and it makes it look a little lonely which we're not going for lonely if you're going for lonely that's a good way to get it but not so much in a still life on the t upper right it's a little too large it's taking it's taking up too much space the fruit and the top of the picture are kind of touching the edges of the picture plane and it looks crowded on the lower left it's a pretty good size but it's up very high there's not enough air at the top and there's a little too much space at the bottom so it makes it feel like it's floating when people look at objects, they want to feel like they've kind of settled down uh, to the bottom by weight and gravity and that there's enough air to breathe at the top. So the one on the lower right is good placement and good space around it. So here's my sketch again. And you want to notice that I'm drawing very lightly. I am not paying any attention to detail. I'm just getting the basic shapes in there and I'm using the lighter pencil. So we draw with a 2B and a 6B pencil. Uh, if you have a tendency to press down too hard, you can get an HB charcoal pencil, but 2B or HB is good because it'll force you to draw a lighter line. And you want light lines at this point because we're not going for accuracy and you will want to erase. So, on the right hand side, you'll see a little map of this as if you were above it looking down. This picture is actually touching the back wall. And so that's the large circle on the right. And so it shows us it's touching the back wall. And then the three pieces of fruit are in front. 
the orange is closest to us and then the apple and the pear are a little further away and then the pictures the furthest away so this means that we will draw the orange the lowest on the drawing because it's closest to us so this is the artist's alphabet the six basic forms all forms are made up of either one of these or a combination of more than one and if you learn how light and shadow falls on the six basic forms you've basically learned the foundation for how to draw anything and we're lucky that there are six um it works like our alphabet but thank goodness we don't have to learn 26 forms but just the way the alf the letters in the alphabet are combined together to make words these six basic forms are combined together to make more complex forms so we'll look at what those forms are on the left we look at the apple and the top of the apple is kind of the top half of a sphere and the bottom of the apple is a section of the cone and then when we see the orange in the center the orange is pretty essentially just one sphere and the pair on the right is basically two spheres. If you have trouble drawing pairs, if you will draw uh, a large sphere and a smaller sphere and just connect them, you'll find that it's a lot easier to draw a pair. Now the picture, uh, the top part of the picture is like a section out of the bottom section of the cone, as we see at left. The bottom part of the picture is a sphere or maybe a little bit squished sphere. And the handle is basically a cylinder that's been curved around into that uh, question mark kind of shape. So this picture is essentially a symmetrical object without the spout or the handle. And in fact, if you were the potter making this, that's exactly how you would make it. You would make a symmetrical um, vessel uh, and first, and then you'd pinch out the little spout, and then you'd roll a cylinder for the handle and adhere that. So as artists, we can draw it that way too. And you'll find you get a much more even looking picture if you think of it in terms of a symmetrical object with a couple of little things added onto it. And it also helps to construct a center line. Your brain will notice um, and compare one side to another once you divide it in half and so that'll help you get it more even and as i you see here i'm still evening up my two sides you can also turn your drawing upside down and that's a really good way to see it from a different perspective and notice what's going on uh, most professional artists will have their drawing upside down about half the time that they're working on it. A lot of times people don't think about doing that, but it gives you another kind of like looking at your drawing from a new perspective. So here we have cleaned up our lines and we're mostly finished with the line drawing. We, our next step would be to put values in. However, what's going on here is a lot of erasing. In the original drawing, you try out a bunch of things and do a bunch of erasing. So what happens is the surface of the paper gets um, a little bit changed and makes it harder to make a nice blend. So uh, this, this type of paper, newsprint paper, is a little bit fragile on the surface. And, but it's also the advantage is it's very inexpensive to draw on. So what we're going to do is instead of struggle with trying to get a nice even blend onto a paper surface that's been sort of um, eroded, we are going to take our line drawing and transfer it to another page of, char of um, newsprint paper. And that'll give us a perfectly clean new surface for blending our values. So the way we do that is we take the drawing and turn it upside down and put it on a light box. If you don't have a light box, you can put it on a window. And we know it's upside down because what we're seeing here is the handle and the pair on the left instead of the right. So we put that on there so we can see the lines through the back and 
copy those lines as we see them. And then we're going to take our 6B pencil, which is the darker one. It makes a darker value. And we're going to kind of squig squiggle to make those lines thicker. And here I've done it all over the entire drawing and the four corners, except I, I left the lower left corner so you could see what the lines look like. But I got the other lines squiggled on. Then with some clips, we will clip this back onto our drawing pad. And then with the 2B pencil, which is the drawing pencil, and a nice point on that, uh, sharp, I sharpen that on a regular pencil sharpener. With a nice point, we're going to go over all those lines. Now I've drawn over this apple, the outline of the apple, and we'll pick up the paper and notice that the apple has transferred to that next page. So we're going to continue that with all of these lines. And we do not want to remove the clips at the top until we're sure we've transferred all the lines. Because once you take that paper off, you can't ever get it in exactly the same place again. So here I've completed doing the, the transferring the lines. And the new drawing is there underneath there on the new on the new page on the newsprint pad. And the upper drawing there is my original drawing that has all the charcoal on the back. So I'm probably going to dispose of that because I don't need it anymore. On the drawing on uh, the bottom there, I will take a ruler to connect those corners so that I can reestablish my outline. So that's the end of the line drawing portion of step one. The values of that drawing will be covered in step one part two in the next video and just to review the seven step painting method we are still working on step one which is rendering a charcoal drawing and we'll continue that with values next so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this you know what to do please like and subscribe so i can make more videos and I offer lots more at my website, oceanviewarts.com.